This is a tweet from Marcel Louis Jacques uh, a couple of days ago. We were actually planning on using it in our previous show, but we didn't get to it. That got me really excited and really got me thinking about what this Buffalo Bills offense is going to look like in 2020. And the, the tweet reads as follows. Josh Allen threw four touchdowns that traveled 20 plus yards in the air in 2019. Every single one of those four touchdown passes went to John Brown. Allen's top wide receivers in 2020, Brown and Stefan Diggs, ranked third and first in the NFL in touchdown receptions of 20 plus air yards last season. Brown was third in the National Football League with four, which means Stefan Diggs was number one. So now going into 2020, Josh Allen's got more than one deep threat. Like we 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 like to criticize Josh Allen's deep ball. And for, for good reason. He missed some guys down the field last year. Um, when we're talking 35, 40 yards down the field, there's a lot of things to work on. But that, like, I would I, I want to call it like long intermediate. It's not a short intermediate. Mm-hmm. It's not a it, it's right. that long intermediate pass. He had a lot of success to John Brown in that long mm-hmm. intermediate range last year. Yep. Now he's got two guys. So Talk to me, Dave, for a second about what just one guy, Stefan Diggs, does for this offense heading into into 2020. Well, I think for one thing, what it does is it gives you it gives the whole field to work with, right? Um, maybe last year you had a situation where Josh Allen, if he was going to look for that sort of long intermediate type of pass play, it, you know, he's limited to one side of the field because we weren't getting much on the other side as far as on the outside with the likes of people like, you know, Robert Foster, whoever was in the lineup at that time, right? So to me, we think about this and what it does is it gives Josh Allen and let's talk about Brian Dable too. It gives him flexibility on how to design plays for Josh Allen, whether it's bootlegs out to the right, if he want to put stick, if he wants to put digs onto the right, hit those intermediate long intermediate throws on the run, if he wants to, you know, sort of reverse pivot him over to the left side and have him set his feet and throw down the left. It just gives more options for Josh Allen. And if we think about those four plays to John Brown last year, for those who aren't, you know, who don't recall exactly what they were, they were the touchdown to John Brown in the Denver game, probably his best throw, to be honest with you, in in my estimation, the touchdown to John Brown in the New England game late in the year where he kind of got, was getting hit through across his body, an unbelievable throw. But the other two throws were actually more like kind of like on ropes. If you remember, it was week one against the Jets, the game winning touchdown down the left sideline. And then it was the touchdown in the second time we played Miami down the right sideline where he zinged it between the cover two, between the safety and the corner. So a good mixture of types of throws as well, right? And this is what we're talking about. It's not just like airing it out, these like lollipop rainbows, Mm -hmm. like 50 yards down the field. It's these sort of long intermediate, like you said, where it's like a mixture of touch and a mixture of sort of that arm strength that now is opened up to the entirety of the field, right? And what it's going to do putting those threats on both sides, both, you know, on the outside, on both sides, it's going to open up things for Cole Beasley and Dawson Knox underneath. And it's also going to open up for those guys to get more yak this year. And I mentioned this on two shows ago where the middle of the field should now be a little bit softer. Now, I think I I truly believe that. And this doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see more from a volume standpoint in deep balls, but I would think it's going to, it's going to do is it's going to help Josh Allen's efficiency Mm -hmm. in, his overall passing game. So we maybe aren't as worried about those long bombs as much this year, like the 50 yard ones, as we are more about the efficiency in the yak over the middle. Now they have, Mm. he's proven himself last year that he can do this long intermediate type of passing. So that's what I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, for sure. And there's just a couple of, I apologize. We're going to get back to Josh. Jones, but there's a couple of comments I want to get to here. Uh, Dried ocean says, I really wish we had, a uh, Jets Bills primetime game would have been a great story and a great game. I'll tell you what, doesn't it seem, Dave, like every year the Bills like end the season with mm-hmm. the Jets, like week 17? Yeah. I think the Jets NFL is it, it's I feel like the NFL is waiting for a year for the Bills and the Jets to be playing a, a play essentially a playing game. Because every year that week 17 matchup, they find the playing game and they make it Sunday night football. So Dried Ocean, you might get your wish if the Bills and the Jets are essentially playing like a playing game, a, a game to win the division, a, a game to win a playoff spot in Week 17, that's probably going to be Sunday Night Football, especially with that New York Jets market. Um, and you mentioned this last year when that was the case before the season. You were like, that game could be a playing game for a playoff spot and could have gotten flexed. So same mm-hmm. you know, same thing could potentially happen this year. Yeah, so 
Um, you know, now back to the Josh Allen and the air raid thing. I think you're, you're spot on. Uh, I remember we've we've made uh, I, we made this comment before in the past about sort of the preseason. One of the things that impressed me the most in the preseason was Josh Br- or John Brown running those curls because mm. everyone thought like, oh, John Brown's going to go deep. John Brown's going to go deep, and then he would he the, the 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 corner would give him so much respect, and then he would just turn it into a curl route. And Josh Allen with that arm strength could really just rifle it in there to John to John Brown for an easy first down. Now, we didn't see a lot of that in the regular season. A lot had to do with the fact that John Brown was the only real consistent deep threat, the fact that Josh Allen couldn't hit a deep ball. But now there's two of them. So imagine John Brown running that curl and Stefan Dace all continuing to go down the field at the same time. You know, So it, it, it opens up so much because Stefan Diggs is a far superior receiver, but now you have two of these John Brown types in your offense. And you know we could talk until we're blue in the face about the impact that Stephon Diggs is going to have, the the continued growth that John Brown's going to have. But what excites me the most is the options it creates for our offense. It's not so much like, oh, Stephon Diggs is going to catch 120 balls for 1,600 yards and 20 touchdowns. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expecting that. I'm not expecting Stephon Diggs to come out and be the greatest wide receiver of all time for the Buffalo Bills. But what I am expecting is for it to get the creative juices of Brian Dable flowing because it's mm-hmm. going to open up so much for this offense. Think of think of an offense, a four wide receiver set, or it doesn't have to be four receiver. It could be it could be three wide receivers and a tight end, Dawson Knox. Think about Stefan Diggs split far out wide by himself, just Stefan Diggs in the sideline on one side, and then the other side you have a trips formation of Dawson Knox, uh, Cole Beasley, and John Brown. Like that's crazy that three guys are on one side of the field like that. You got Cole Beasley who can work the middle, Dawson Knox who's a yak guy, John Brown who can go down the field. Like you saw Baker Mayfield in his rookie season have most of his success out of the play action and with a formation where three wide receivers were on the same side of the field. I mean, bring in your rookie Gabe Davis now. Gabe Davis split out far and wide on the on the far side of the field. And on the other side of the field in a four wide receiver set, All on one side of the field, you have Stephon Diggs, John Brown, Cole Beasley. Good luck covering that. Good luck figuring out what Brian Dable is going to do when those three guys are on the same on the same side of the field. And you run a play action, you get the safeties creeping up, all of these things. That that's crazy the amount of of plays it opens up for the offense, the the number of personnel sets it opens up for the offense, the number of things it does in the middle when the safeties have to think. So I'm just excited to see. Brian Dable's creative juices maybe flow a little bit more with, um, you know, with Stefan Diggs there, maybe even just as a decoy.